It's going to be next Friday, not tomorrow, but the week after. Did you get yours, Mick? I've gotten mine a while back. I've, yeah. I'm uh, part of the herd. I, it's been three weeks since my, my second shot. Ah. Pam's going to be late. She's rebooting her computer. She's having problems. She has texted Linda about it. Oh, that's even worse. Wow. I couldn't get in on this either for a while. <clears throat> All right, Roger, we have five. One, two, three, four, yep. five. Yes, I am here. Okay, good man. Thank you. It may be a while before Pam gets here. Linda just told me she's having major problems. What's worse, major? Uh, never mind. <laughs> How's the boats doing? What's that? How's the boats doing? Um. A lot of grinding, a lot of itchy, scratchy. Do they float yet? Hmm? Do they float no. yet? <laughs> um, we have five. Zach, you want to get going? I'm ready if you guys are. OK. Everyone ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. I, yes, I'm, I'm recording. recording. Ready. Ready. Mike, you all set? Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to the March 4th, 2021 City of Manistee Planning Commission meeting. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, Thank you. Please take roll. Commissioner Slowinski? Here. Commissioner Smansky? Here. Commissioner Mimberto? Commissioner Weiner? Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yeah. Chair Whitliff? Here, thank you. Approval agenda at this time, the Planning Commission can take action to approve the March 4th, 2021 agenda. Is there any, is there a motion? Jemanski, I'll make that motion. Second. By Mick, second by? A second. Bob, any discussion? None, please take roll. Mr. Slowinski? Yes. Mr. Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes, thank you. Approval of minutes at this time, the Planning Commission can approve the February 4th, 2021 minutes. Is there a motion? So I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by one, second by Bob. Yeah. Oh, okay. Any Roger discussion? That. No, I didn't say nothing. You didn't? Okay. Please take roll. Commissioner Sawinski? Yes. Commissioner Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes, thank you. Public hearings. Mark. Mark. Yes. We we need you guys to state where you are located for for the like, um the Zoom meeting as part of that. Like so, City of Manistee. Well, or... It's a requirement under it. So if you guys could do roll call again and just state where you're located. 
this evening. Um, okay, so each commissioner has to give a location? That's correct. Okay, so okay. we'll just go through it, Mick. Okay. All right, Nick Shemansky, 332 Fifth Street, Manistee. Um, up. Uh, planet Earth, out oh, Manistee, North Side. Roger? Oh, uh, Roger Yoder, Manistee, uh, Michigan. Uh, Marlene. Marlene. Marlene, 217 River Street, City, Manistee. Okay. Is that Pammy on? Looks like she's here. Yeah. Hello, Pam. You're muted. You're muted. Muted, Pam. Pam. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. I had computer problems. I had to crash and start all over. That's okay. Uh, Pam, we're at the point where uh, giving location. Our um, location. Is okay, 410 Pine Street. Okay. Can you see? Mark Whitlift, 363 10th Street in <laughs> Manistee. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nancy. Public hearings, uh, we have none. Uh, public comment on agenda related items. Um, if you have a comment, uh, please raise your hand since we're in a Zoom meeting. Uh, you'll have three minutes to comment on agenda related items. At the three minute mark, um, the moderator will shut down the microphone. So, at that, at that with this, uh, is any comment on the agenda related items? So, uh, public person number one, I see your full name here. Um, let's see here. Melissa Spilker. Do you have anything to say on agenda related items? That's a, uh, I'm sorry, Zach, that's a friend of mine. I just pushed the same link. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. It's one that's of my fine. partners. Well, move to the next one then. Uh, Richard Blue, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? No, thank you. Aaron Glenn, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? No, thank you. And Beth, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? Beth, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? Beth, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? And we just oh, had somebody. Thank you. Okay. We just had somebody come in here just at the last second. Uh, Reed Grosset, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? Is, is that, am I saying that right? Reed Grosset, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? They're muted. Reed Grosset, do you have anything to say on agenda related items? No. Thank you. All right, Chair. Thank you, Zach. Okay, new business, um, Ironworks special use permit transfer. Zach, I will hand it off to you. Yeah, so this transfer here is for Ken Armour. I, think, I believe he's here. Um, it's a transfer and from my understanding. So with the city a special use permit, the permit is tied to the property owner. And when the property owner changes, the SUP stays with the property. So it looks like Ken had some changing in, in his investors and, and the group involved with that. And so when that changes, the, the name on the SUP has to change, but that has to be, that has to be um, approved by the planning commission. So if there's any other questions there, I'll, I'll take questions on that. Otherwise I'm gonna turn it over to Ken to just kind of give you a better explanation of what he's doing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ken? Oh, okay. Good to see you guys again. Especially you, Roger. You look good up there in the corner of my screen. <laughs> um, the only thing that's uh, the only thing that's changed is the uh, Zach caught it. Uh, prior to Zach, there was quite a bit of turnover there. 
and the LLC was a different LLC. And then the last guy put in the wrong uh, property ID number in the SUP. So nothing's changed on what we're asking, but Zach uh, caught some really good things that, uh, that uh, would have been very problematic later on because this SUP was uh, slated to go on somebody else's property. So Zach caught that, brought it to my attention. Hey, we need to bring this back to the planning commission. None of the terms have changed or anything, uh, but that's basically it. Okay. I met with uh, Mark uh, Miller yesterday uh, because of uh, Thad. I guess is a whole other subject, but just to keep you cluing in, we're working weekly on this. Um, at the advice of Thad, I met with uh, Mark. It was really helpful. He's going to uh, kind of act as a liaison. Uh, he's going to throw some stuff at you guys. Uh, soon about the next step or phase two that I'm working on. Um, I have a really good tenant for the industrial spot that we're working on for the cannabis rental. It's a really good group. Uh, I don't know if you guys have talked to them. You, some of you have, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, things are moving along good. Uh, I talked to, remember the, the guy that did the charity food basket in that side? in the side yard there, the, oh, yes. the farmer, whatever. I talked to him last weekend and I agreed. Uh, I told him I'd meet him again Saturday, but I agreed to uh, let him use that property again uh, free. He's going to uh, start planting in the next week or two. And then obviously as, uh, as uh, Mark had mentioned to me, Ken, you're doing a good job so far with Goodwill. We know we got the uh, river walk going. Uh, I'm donating that property again so they can farm that again this year with all the seniors. Um, there's a couple other things I'm coming online with that I think you'll be very happy with, with the, the big large center area of the place, leaving most of it uh, wide open for the fruit market in the community event space that, that we had talked about. So things are finally moving along in the direction where we were hoping. Um, you know, we give the property to every year, the Christmas parade, we let them stage all our horses and everything there. And if you guys see other good uh, good duties that, uh, that I can help with, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we're more than happy to work with the community. Keep Roger off my back. Hey, Ken. Uh, yeah. Question, could you uh, clarify uh, what Mark you met with? Miller. Uh, Mark Miller, Chamber of Commerce. Chamber. I asked Thad who to be the best was because I didn't want to keep, I know I've met with all you guys and we had really good meetings and I didn't want to keep dragging everybody through and talking to them. And Thad said to me, uh, the two things that Thad impressed on me the most was number one, the city's not going to give you any money. So I, I understood that from the last two years. And uh, he said probably your best approach would work through Mark and the first time I met him, I've been talking to him, but I met him and he spent an hour with me and we walked around the property and I was very impressed with him, by the way. Whoever hired him, I think, uh, did a good job, but he's definitely, his heart's in the right place for sure. Um, but yeah, he's helping me through some things. He's uh, brought on a couple lines. I've uh, met with a couple local people in your city there that want to do a, uh, tell me to shut up when you want, but uh some nice local people that want to try and replace that. Uh, remember the ice cream parlor there, of course, the world famous one. Um, mm -hmm. They want to put a small ice cream parlor. A couple people want to do a uh, tanning salon. And there's some businesses now that uh, the new regime, which is including you guys, I think has done a phenomenal job for the city. Um, so there seems to be a need for some good space down there. Uh, reasonable space obviously the rent prices are a lot lower up there but the things that you guys have done so far to help me with allowing that cannabis grow um those are the things that that i can give back and you know get the rent prices where they need to be and some of the things i talked about mark um you guys all remember the the big argument about the signage with uh tell me to shut up if you guys got to go home early or something but i haven't had a chance to talk with you in a while uh so the signage, remember the cafe 1907, there was a big issue with the city going back and forth. And I talked to Mark and I talked to a couple other people. And you know, as you're coming south on 31, 
the sign that says welcome to historic Manistee and it points to the left and it says River Street. Oh. Uh, what's that? So I'm, I'm hoping they'll consider once we develop this, that was one of the things Mark's going to talk to you. Maybe we can put another sign on top of that that says uh, the Peninsula District maybe goes to the uh, to the right. Just something to show really different area than the River Street. But the history of that ironworks and with now the Milwaukee House and I think Manistee is going to have so much to offer down there in that peninsula. And as Mark said, I take it as a flattering compliment. But he said, Ken, you're going to be a pioneer here. I think this is going to open up the uh, the whole peninsula district and all the property owners that I've been talking to. They're open to it, too. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, that's something I guess will that'll be in my next uh, request. And Mark's going to meet with you guys and talk with you. And he liked the idea. And, I think it'll satisfy her. She's got a good business. I mean, they're good people that I know of, and they do a great business. And you go in that and the history of the ironworks, not to beat a dead horse, but and what you guys have approved for the other side is just incredible. I mean, Manistee is gonna Manistee is gonna really, really blow up. I think it's gonna do it. And you're doing it in the right way, I think, and all the municipalities and communities that I've worked with. I mean, you guys are doing it the right way. We appreciate that. So good, good, good band of brothers uh, on the planning commission. So yeah, sisters. So I will, do, you have any uh, do you have any questions for me about? If any I, I, any of the commissioners have questions, please uh, feel free. Mark, uh, yeah. Mark yeah. could I ask yeah. a question? Sure, go ahead, Roger. Uh, the property that's east of the ironworks that the consumers cleaned all up is that it? city or what's going to happen with that vacant area are you asking me well whoever yeah you if you i can probably be the the most advised at this point i've been working with consumers on it and yeah. uh, the guys are really good guys and they told i said look at if i'm going to come and invest all this money and take all the risk i would really hope you know you could at least yeah. give me first crack at whatever so eric which you guys know i think he's on a county commission hey, eric uh, good stuff eric good stuff yeah. Great guy, fabulous. And he said, Ken, I think, and I've been meeting with him. And he said, Ken, when you when you uh, submit your second SUP, maybe it would help you to scratch out something that you have designed for there. And as long as the city buys into it, and consumers really isn't out to make, you know, they're not a, really supposed to be a for profit. So as mm -hmm. long as I, if I can make it uh, uh, similar to. The Ironworks project, where it blends right in, and it's a, a similar idea which we have in mind. Um, he said, if we submit it, and the and the city, I mean, you guys have full control, really. Um, and the city says, you know what? We'd really like to see this development go this way. Once I get, once I show you guys the initial concept, and you give your feedback on it, whether hey, you know what? This will really work well for the Peninsula District in that piece of parcel. It'll work well for the city. He believes that consumers will give me a fair price where it doesn't go out to bid to, you know, a bunch of people and, and they can do what they want by right. So I'm hoping we can do it that way. And he said, as long as we get an appraisal and it's fair market, consumers is going to be okay. So I think I'll have something to present to you guys soon, but I got uh, enough on my plate, but it's coming to fruition finally. I know the, the cannabis guys. I'm not sure which one of you guys has been talking to him. I know Zach's met him. Dad's been on Zoom calls with him. Mark Miller has been on Zoom. They're just outstanding guys. Um, and it's a publicly owned company, so it's not a, you know, a couple young hippies trying to make their way through. I mean, these guys can do it right, and it took me a lot of time to vet them out to find someone that can properly do it and not leave the city hanging or me hanging or anything like that. But That'll be fine. Thank, thank you for your answer. Hey, Ken, this is Mick Shemansky. Do you have any timelines on when uh, they'll start to uh, work on developing the uh, grow facility at the backside of the ironworks? I, I, did, Zach, did I send you a copy of the lease? I think it's actually April they're going to start. It's within 60 days, and they're going to come. You know, it's public. It's a publicly owned company. If you guys have a uh, pencil, you probably all do. Uh, it's called Body and Mind. The ticker symbol is uh, BMMJ. And the two guys, I would tell you, uh, 
because I know about it. And like I told Zach, uh, he warned me about it, that I can't tell anybody that doesn't know, but you guys are city officials. So if not insider trading, I would advise all you guys to buy some BMMJ stock. <laughs> <laughs> it's 52 cents a share right now. Just buy a thousand bucks and uh, <laughs> It's not insider trading. I made that clear. My attorney said, nope, you can tell them. So I told Zach, too. But uh, we're really good people. You can Google them, and you'll see the CEO and the CFO, uh, Mike Miller and uh, Trip Hoffman. They're just great guys. They'll be spending a lot of time up here. But they've been on the phone with all your uh, counsel, and I know I know Zach's been on there. Uh, Thad's been on there, and we're very happy, or else I'm sure you guys would have would have heard something from them. But they're first-class operation, and they're – that's what I was trying for anyway, rather than to go for all these public subsidies, bring in some private money and let them uh, have at it and invest in the community. And I mean, that's yeah. what we want anyway. Yeah, that's true. Can I ask something? Uh, sure. Did I hear you say that you're planning on having the farmer's market down there at the Ironworks too? Yep, yep. I think that's going to be a great amendment for the city. Um, it has in the back, if you guys remember, there's a rail spur that actually goes into that building. So there's an opening in the back that you can open up the, the, the restaurant people all use it, but you can drive a full car, truck, or whatever in there. So it'll be great for people to set up their booths and tear down and, and move out in inclement weather, snow, rain, whatever. And, and some of the condos we have designed for there are apartments are gonna have a, a back to the inside of the building. So I think that's gonna be one of the coolest places around that you're gonna be able to walk out on your deck, either inside or outside, and you can look at the activities down below. Hopefully the beast area where she's operating now, you can go out and have glass wine or the fruit market or the fruit market for the locals. I think it's gonna be a big win. But well again, I mean you guys are the ones that are helping me create the value. I'm not a genius by any means. You guys allowing me to to you know, assemble the group of people that are willing to pay and operate. So I'm very transparent in that. I think it's good for the, the community and anybody involved. I've been working with Brian Garcia from the chamber because we had asked, they had asked to put uh, that Jesse's garden at the senior center. I'm on the board there. Plus we offered to have the farmer's market there because we have plenty of parking and space. <laughs> And he was working with the farmers and was supposed to get back to me. So when you said that, that was all news to me. So that is confirmed they are going to be coming to the ironworks? For the, uh, for the garden? I think that's what they call it. Yeah, Jesse, Jesse's Garden, is that what it's called? Yeah, yes, plus yeah. the farmer's market. Yep, I had to talk to him a couple times I talked to him. I told him to call me Saturday and I'll give him the confirmation. He did look at all the property up at the senior center, so I'm sure we're talking about the same thing. And he said that the, the soil wasn't that good up there. And he said we've already invested two years into tilling and, and making it a rich soil on the side of the ironworks. So he said it would be much easier for everybody to go there. I thought not, okay. a better, not a better so, time to get a music when I need something from the city, right? Roger. And Ken, wow. Ken and Marlene, I, I think you may be looking at two different things. I, Ken, I think you're talking about actually the community farmers' uh, gardens, correct? Correct. Is that too different? I'm sorry. Not the, the farmers' market is what's currently on Memorial Drive right across the street from the uh, uh, North Channel Brewery. Correct. The farmers market, yeah, we'd like to bring in. But the only thing I'm talking to right now is uh, the person you're talking about, the community garden. He's got a Washington. Garden. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to clarify because, as far as I we know, uh, the the market is still located on that corner. It is. It Washington is. Washington yeah. and Memorial. I think it would be a good amenity to move it right inside yep. to that front. Head. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I just had a question and uh real quick here. So uh we're we're transferring us to our the, the special use permit here um with a certain site plan attached to it. So I, I'm cautioning Ken here from modifying from any existing site plan that's been approved and adding in a grow for an, a farmer's market 
because I don't believe that's part of the initial site plan. So I'm, I'm cautioning you to, to review that before you agree to anything um, with anybody, because then you'll have to come back here to amend your site plan. Um, okay. Right now we're just transferring it. I'm just, I am really just cautioning you. I don't, it's not that I, you know, one way or another, you know, we'll facilitate it, but before you enter into an agreement, it's sure that you have permission to do that use. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that for sure. I wouldn't, uh, I'm not entering into any agreements other than the outside where the guys, the community garden that, uh, that uh, Mick just brought up, but uh, that, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm cautioning you against that right now. Oh, okay. Even for the outside garden? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before I tell you yes, plan. Plan. And Zach, I, I don't think I'm far off on that. It's been a while since I've looked at it, but I will no, review you're, it. You're okay. right. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt anyone, but yeah, that's not a, as of right now on this permit, that's not a permitted use. But you are that, that is an amendment that could be made you just have to go back okay. in front of the planning commission should i have him come talk to you guys or should it be me that presents it an amendment on the garden on the outdoor garden both at, a, at okay. another planning commission meeting i would recommend okay. coming forward right now we're just okay. transferring it to get it all squared away but then if you want to add additional uses you would need to amend it and then amend okay. the gotcha. plan to get approval to do that. So okay. uh, I was just cautioning because I, I know you're, you're talking to agreements and, but if, if I recall correctly, it was not approved in the original site plan. So no, I, I didn't want you to enter into anything. And then basically you, you, you've entered into an agreement you can't uphold. So okay. Well, all I told him is he could use it. So I'll, uh, I'll get the necessary documents that you guys say that I, that I need, cause I wasn't charging him or anything. He's just going to use it for free. So but I'll get the, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, Mike, uh, I'll email you and you can send me the necessary or I can talk with Zach or whatever's better. Right, yeah. I, I guess I recall a fencing in that area that was approved in the original site plan as well as part of the, the requirements of the unloading and unloading area as well as yep. lighting. And, and I, I don't want to, I didn't want you to agree to something that, there, that we couldn't grant because we were tied into the original site plan. Okay, okay. Nope, that's helpful. Uh, any other questions? Um, if, Roger? Yes, if I could just make one comment to Ken. He mentioned about hippies, and there's nothing wrong with a good old hippie. So <laughs> let's, let's put that squared away. That's all I got to say. You know one, Roger? I think that uh, no, no, I don't, but uh, I'm sure there's a round. Okay. All right. Uh, you kill me. <laughs> All right. Nothing wrong with a good hippie. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, you don't have a question? No? Okay. All right. Um, you all set with me? Uh, if there is no other questions, I don't have any. Everybody is taking care of that. So thank you, Ken. Yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. If uh, anybody needs anything, everybody knows how to get a hold of me. If you got any input or any other ideas that I can help the community out with that property, um, we got a loading dock. I got a forklift there. I got a guy there. We got plenty of stuff. So if you guys see any uh, community needs, please uh, yell at me that I can help. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye. Um, so Mike or Zach, this needs a, a motion then, correct? That, that is correct. All, all voting on Zoom actually requires a motion. So. Okay. So um, with this, is there a motion to transfer, excuse me, the uh, Ironworks SUP transfer? Is there a motion? Thank you. You're muted, Nick. Nick, you're muted. Hello? Roger, can you make a motion? Oh, yes. Oh, a motion on this transfer. Are we now to wait for the amendments that he's making before this transfer take effect, or can we make this transfer without making, without looking at the site plan? That's my question. Yes, we can make the motion, because uh, that... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. That's a 
That is another. So this is so this yeah. is an SUP you guys have already approved. This is just a transfer of, of ownership. So there's this the the, the ideas he was talking about with the garden and everything. Those would have to come back to you guys later. So I'll I'll make the motion that we approve the transfer the special use permit for the ironworks um, as submitted. Okay. Second. Any seconds? We'll second it. Second by Bob. Any other discussion? <coughs> None. Please take a roll. Commissioner Salinsky? Yes. Commissioner Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Let's press star six, Marlene. Comm Commissioner McBride? Marlene, unmute yourself, please. Marlene? Marlene? Star six. There she goes. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Old business. Uh, we have none. Public comments and communication. This time, the uh, can uh, make a comment. You have up to three minutes. At the three-minute mark, the moderator will shut down the microphone. So, okay, it looks like we've got Richard Blue here. No, no comment. Thank you. Okay. Aaron Glenn? No comment, thanks. Beth, do you have any com public comments? I don't, thank you. And regress it? Did, did we ever get an answer out of that one? Reed Grasset, do you have any public comments you'd like to make? Reed Grasset, do you have any public comments you'd like to make? <clears throat> Not at this time. Okay. And that looks like all of them, Mark. Okay, thank you. Moving on to correspondence. I understand we have some correspondence. Yep. I can go first here. It looks like, I think we've got nine or 10 here. So uh, Mike and I are gonna go back and forth like usual. Okay. So everybody can strap in. All right, dear Chairperson Whitliff, I am writing you to you to communicate my support for the Lakeshore project to be presented to the Planning Commission. This project will provide Manistee with numerous benefits financially and strategically for growth. The economic impacts of this project are slated to increase annual visitor spending by 4 million and create 35 jobs. The indirect benefits of this project will, be, will also be worth noting and looking forward to. Competition is good for business and consumers. Business must remain competitive, not only with each other on a main street scale, but regionally when it comes to visitors spending and decisions. The position and branding of this project will be very competitive and I personally feel it will elevate the current businesses who will invest in their properties to remain competitive. With miles of lakeshore available to our community and visitors to experience a natural shoreline through federal, state and township parks, to parks the position of the Lakeshore Hotel project cannot be beat. In addition to the visitor spending, it is projected that at least 400,000 in property taxes will be generated for the city to put to good use. I moved to Manistee first in 2013 to co-op with the Packaging Corporation of America and in 2017 moved here full time. I saw the potential of this town to be a community with great employment opportunities and high quality of life. Now as an established resident, board member of the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, treasurer of the Manistee JCs, an active community volunteer, I frequently interact with visitors and young professionals making the same decisions I made. From my perspective, there is a unique combination of opportunity forming in Manistee. Employers are dealing with a wave of retirements and highly paid positions, both skilled trade and technical. Remote work opportunities are increasing due to improving communication infrastructure and changing economy. 
young professionals are looking to relocate for good work and a good in a great place to live just like I did. Projects like this will continue to support development to our, of our community, making it a favorable place to live for all people in all stages of life. A great place to live often starts with a great place to visit. We as locals need to realize the potential for this project as the professional investors looking at our community already have. A project like this will happen somewhere and it, will, it would be a disservice of Manistee's future to not allow it to happen here. Dylan Walker, Manistee Township. Francis Holmes, 125 Hancock Street, Manistee, Michigan, 49660, dated February 25th, 2021. I would like to endorse the building of this motel on the Lakeshore Motel site. It would add new jobs and give a boost to the local economy. People staying at the motel would eat in our restaurants and shop at our local stores. Whenever I travel and stay overnight, I go to local restaurants and shop in the town stores. This motel would be able to provide rooms for persons taking advantage of the convention center that will be built on River Sea. A dial-a-ride bus could provide rides from that motel to the convention center, and this would be an additional revenue to the DART budget. I genuinely endorse the building of this new motel, not only for the economy boost, but also for the improved water lines that would be installed and be a benefit to the local property owners. Sincerely yours, Francis Holmes. To the Manistee Planning Commission. I am a summer person, but my family and I own three cottages and four empty lots in Manistee County. I've spent every summer there since 1949, so I feel I have a legitimate vested interest in the future and prosperity of the area. I have read with trepidation about plans to replace the Lakeshore Motel with Hampton Inn. This seems contrary to Manistee's recent goal to emphasize the beauty of the area, for example, dis discussions to enhance the riverfront or in the newly planned attractive development at 31 and River Street. A Hampton Inn will not en enhance Manistee's beachfront. A blocky cement high rise resembling every motel on US interstates is not, keeping, is not in keeping with the ambiance of the beach nor the Victorian city. A clever architect and sensitive developer could create a much more appropriate and economically viable structure. I question how long the life expectancy is for these sort of generic motels. I imagine the owning corporation has a formula for that and I expect that it isn't into the next century. In addition, I question the comments of Mr. Bukema regarding parking as reported in the News Advocate. When he says guests typically leave between four and nine in the morning, really at the beach? And if they arrive in the late afternoon, that's when many locals get off work and enjoy the beach in, into the evening. Seems to me that these are thoughtless comments of somebody hustling for a building permit. Please give some thought to 50 years ahead or even 100. Should the beachfront be dilapidated, uninteresting, or high rises, or perhaps remarkably attractive and distinctive waterfront? Kindly submit this letter as a comment at your public hearing. Respectfully, Virginia Cates. Welcome to Manistee. I've been here 25 years and love it. I'm, e I'm emailing you today to let you know I'm against the size of the new first hotel. I believe it's way too big for the space and will make a mess of the beach, parking, etc. You will agree if you're here this summer. Please don't let this happen. Rita McCain. Dear Mark, I'm writing to you on, on behalf of the Manistee Manufacturers Council. As you know, the MMC represents manufacturers in our community, creating not just a central voice, but also a rely, reliable conduit for clear communication between our members, the public, and our government and our local governments. With that in mind, the purpose of this letter is to make clear the MMC's support for the current Lake Sh Lakeshore Hotel Initiative. Since developers presented their preliminary, prelim, preliminary plans to the City Council on December 8th, MMC members have watched with enthusiasm for what we are confident is a project that provides tangible and lasting value. The project not only provides additional attractive accommodations, accommodation of choice for vacationers, business travelers, and family returning to visit the area, but also powerful economic benefits that clearly enhance spending in our town by an estimated 4 million per year, create 35 new permanent jobs, and provide an additional 400,000 annually in taxes to local and state government. And there is also potential measurable 
indirect gains for the community as well, such as the storm, such as the potable and storm water infrastructure improvements. Uh, as manufacturers, we understand and appreciate projects that will provide long-term job benef tax benefits and improved infrastructure. These are real and bring tangible benefit to a broad spectrum of our community and not just a small or sp so special select interest group. As business leaders in the community, we can, we can also attest to the desirability of this lodging choice for our customers, suppliers, and company staff who routinely visit our operations in Manistee every year. Perhaps more importantly, through our experience, the demographic that stays in this type of hotel is generally not utilizing other Manistee is generally not utilizing other Manistee accommodations, choosing instead to seek similar hotels in the neighboring communities, resulting in a very real spending loss for other local merchants. And while we value our imp their important input, we also feel compelled to address the concerns raised by some in our community with regard to the potential to de detract from the beauty of our local beach and shoreline and access, and access to it by existing residents. Most importantly, the, cons the construction of the new hotel is proposed for a site with the same current use, replacing exi an existing hotel that has surpassed its useful life with a new modern facility that fulfills the same purpose. This project does not propose the destruction of habitat, natural areas, or current parks and beaches. It simply replaces an existing facility with a similar footprint. And with regard to aesthetics of the beach and the shoreline, is important to understand that the existing tree, tree line height will mitigate concerns about views from the south and east directions. The MMC appreciates the opportunity to comment on an initiative we strongly believe is good for our community. We wish to thank the Planning Commission for their thoughtful consideration of our comments and encourage them to move forward with the expedite, expeditious approval of the Lakeshore project. Sincerely, Jim Reithel. Manistee, progress or stagnation? Progress and stagnation are the only options for everything and anything in human endeavors. The fate of cities and communities are no exception to the rule. Cities, like all living things, evolve or die. Many cities in Michigan and throughout the country have died while others have thrived. The common denominator for success and failure is the community's leadership having foresight or being blind to the realities facing their community. We all know what Manistee has been. Do we know what it will be in the future? The answer is clear and a definitive no. Manistee has been in the county or has been and continues to be in a state of confusion. While our neighbors in Muskegon, Lyington, and Frankfort continue to evolve and evolve into vibrant, vibrant communities, we have been stuck in the endless debate over economic development versus stagnation. Stagnation has been the clear winner thus far. Many consider Manistee to be an industrial city while others view it as a tourist destination. These two groups are the main reasons for the state of community confusion that has paralyzed the city and county. The industrial group is living in the past. Industry does not view Manistee as a manufacturing center. The factors are many, obvious, and not the subject of this message. Basically, Manistee is outside the sphere of main industrial supply chain. Logistics are complex and costly, for any new industry uh, project to be feasible. The tourist group wants to freeze Manistee in its current state. They do not want any change. They oppose any proposal that would help the city forge a new path into the future. Sadly, they are an older generation that is making selfish, excuse me, selfish decisions at the expense of the, younger, of the younger generation being born and growing up in the community. Manistee can be successful as both a tourist and business destination. In addition to its seasonal population, second homes and tourists, Manistee is a real and permanent community whose fate is in, in deliberately tied to the success of failure in, of city and county leadership. The community's future is reflected in decision made and trends set by its youth. Whenever a young Manistee citizen leaves for school or other opportunities, they never come back. There is a little to attract them back to their hometown. Economic development is almost non-existent. Social advancement opportunities and jobs are few. The hospital industry creates jobs for the local youth and generates tourism revenue for the community. The Lakeshore Hotel Project, the Portage Point Inn, the Spirit of the Wooden Manistee Gateway Project, should be welcome and incentivized instead of throwing roadblocks in their path. For reference, see the exemplary 
to the exemplary city manager working for betterment in his community. It uh, is a website for Muskegon when city approval. Manistee County cannot even reach a consensus on using available federal and state funds to build a sewer system in Onecma. Most septic systems in the area are draining into the jewel of our community, Portage Lake. Economic and community development requires smart decisions making or start smart decision making and hard work. Doing nothing and blocking everything is easy. Just vote no and the case is closed. When the light bulb was invented, there was an urgent and real drive to protect the candle and oil lamp producers. The car industry sparked a similar desire to protect the horse-drawn carriages, saddle, and whip makers. The world moved into the electric grid, the highway system, and electric age, despite the opposition. Does Manistee want to cling to the candle, the horse-drawn carriage, or embrace sustainable development and move into the future? That is the only decision facing us as a community. Signed here. Dear Mark Whitliffe, I would like to express my excitement about the new hotel on First Street Beach. I've been a business owner in Manistee for 25 years. I'm on 78 Division Street. Port City Clipper is my business and my home. I love our town and over the years have invested my time, effort, and heart here. I believe in our town, but so many times when there was talk of a hopeful progressive shift, it always fell short and failed. I would love to keep our small town charm and at the same time have progressive economical climb. Maintaining our natural beauty and spacious environment is, is important. I do not see any problem with the new hotel. I believe we need a place for our beach, on our beach for lodging and dining. How wonderful it would be to enjoy the view while dining and listening to some live music. Many times over the years, I have greeted visitors over on the Riverwalk or Pier and they ask me with surprise, isn't there a place to have a drink and enjoy a view around here? A five-story hotel should not be a problem or a hindrance. The details need to be thought through though. I think planning ahead for traffic needs to be addressed. A left turn signal at, at first and Maple could really help during busy times. Hiring more city workers at the beach and park are important key things to keep in, important things to keep maintained. The sewer, well, that's a big problem. I've personally witnessed the sewage rolling down the river. It's appalling. This has to be stopped. This city is this city is going to grow, so I say let's be proactive. The town has many positive, hardworking people who believe in it. Focusing on the positive has never never been the norm here, unfortunately. It seems that many are afraid of change, but without change, there is no growth. That applies to the people. We are on this earth to make things better. We have only one chance to make a good first impression. Cleaning up this town, fixing the river walk, the new plan for the gateway to the city, and the new hotel are all great things for our community. Please stop being afraid and negative. Let's be excited and supportive of those who want to create a better manistee while keeping its lovely charm. Sincerely, Monica Robinson. This one's dated February 11th, 2021, and it's to Mark Whitliffe, Chair, City of Manistee Planning Commission. Dear Mark, recently the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce approved the below resolution in regards to the Lakeshore Hotel project. Whereas the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce was resolved on the 11th day of February 2021, here states its support of the redevelopment of two acres of land on First Street, Manistee, Michigan, where the current Lakeshore Hotel is located. Whereas the Manistee Area Chamber, um, Chamber of Commerce supports the plan unit development, or PUD, whereas the Manistee Area, Area, Chamber, Area Chamber of Commerce supports the benefits of increased taxable values to the local units of government and citizens from this development. Whereas the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce supports the 35 permanent new jobs from this project and numerous construction jobs. Whereas the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce supports an estimated $4 million in increased tourism to support existing businesses. Sincerely, Stacy Bitwork, President and CEO, Dennis P. McCarthy, Board Chair, Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce. Is that your last one, Mike? I got one more. Oh, yeah, one more? Okay. Yeah. So this is my last one here. Dear Mr. Szymanski, I'm writing regarding the special use permit for Victorian Reserves LLC. With Marijuana Alley on Arthur Street, why do we need a factory to grow it? 
The owners state they will minimize and mitigate light, noise, and odor effects in the area. Where is the guarantee? The this is uh, handwritten, by the way. So I'm, if I'm struggling, it's because I'm trying to understand here. The final plan is, is for a factory to become a 30,000 square feet processing facility. What is the city going to gain from this operation? If we, will, if we allow one of these operations, will it open the door for the others to want to move into the, into the area? Maybe they should find a new location. Is it possible for members of the Planning Commission and maybe some city council members tour one of the operating facilities to get a fresh hand review as to what it is in, involved in this type of operation? The billboard on the highway promoting marijuana has been, has been changed but the new one is no better. It seems we are eager to promote this bad idea. Respectfully, Thomas Appella. Good day, Chairman Whitliff. I wanna express my support for the redevelopment of the Lakeshore project on First Street across from the beach. I'm not going to go into all the positive numbers that we know and the positive impact it will have on for our community. I believe the job of the City Planning Commission is to approve a use if it fits the technical criteria. The CPC should make sure it fits a location and due to its unique location has a great opportunity to, to do just what it what excuse me to do just that with a request for a planned unit development or PUD. This hotel needs to be a destination hotel, not just a place to spend a night or two. Number one, does the exterior fit the location? Number two, what amenities will, be, will it be offering? Number three, is parking an issue? I certainly hope it's the only with an extremely large lot across the street from the location. This is the type of thing the CPC, the city council and the city manager can solve to make sure parking doesn't hinder an amazing development. Number four, the height of the structure is another cause for concern for some. Currently, there are many pine trees east of the current hotel. The view through these trees is extremely limited. The number of floors and amount of rooms needed to make this project work monetarily is important. Let's all work to make sure this project is successful and can be all it can be. Thank you for your work. Or thank you for the work you and the CPC does. Jeffrey Dons, County Commissioner, District 5. Thank you. That That is it then? All done. All right. Thank you, Zach and Mike. Um, okay, move on to staff, staff reports. All right. Um, earlier in the meeting, I said uh, it takes a motion during a Zoom meeting. I meant a roll call vote, although it's got to be a roll call vote. So I, I want to make that correction real quick during Zoom. Um, and then uh, I was at a recent um, city council meeting and I was questioning about the sign ordinance. We had actually sent forward um, a request for uh, clarification from the city about the sign ordinance. And um, I thought we had done that and I verified that, but uh, I was questioning again about it um, where they came back and said they didn't want us to develop the sign ordinance at that time. Um, and then I was questioned again about it. So, uh, kind of getting mixed signals here on that. So um, I don't know, Mick, if you can give me something that, that you know, do you guys want us to develop it or, or do you not? Or <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of kind of getting both there. So um, there's that. Uh, trying to think of what else. Uh, trails, I think, is something I should touch on. Um, we're partnering with uh, Networks Northwest in the area to help um, put the trails into the county recreation plan. Many communities have signed on to that, uh, villages as well as townships. We're moving forward with the scope of work as well as uh, getting that established. So we're hoping to be working on that later this summer with Networks Northwest. Um, but, you know, I figured a, an update here would, you know, 
let you guys know that that is moving forward. So. Okay. Thank you, Zach. You have anything? I don't have anything. I'm all set. Okay. Nancy. Nope. Okay. Now uh, move along to member discussions. We'll start with Roger. You have anything, Roger? You're on mute. Okay. No, I don't have anything offhand. That uh, things are going. When are we going to get together again? How about that? I hope soon. Oh, okay. I hope very soon. So the. Uh, Less, uh, 25 or less is still in uh, Okay, nothing, I'm good, thank you okay. Bob? Okay, one thing I did have when we had that meeting with the city council where they had the redevelopment stuff normally when we've had these joint meetings the commissions have got a chance to say things at this meeting that meeting we didn't allow any of us on the commissions to speak. They cut a couple people off. So the city messed up on that. So I hopefully in the future we'll try that. And that's it. That's all I got. Thank you, Bob. Nick. Nick, you're on mute. Have have we uh actually uh are we continuing to be in contact with the Hampton Inn? Um, do we know if, if they're going to be submitting anything uh, in a reasonable amount of time? Uh, we anticipate something very shortly. Um, we're, we're the, the requirements of the site plan have not, have not um, been satisfied from uh, our aspect to consider an actual application that, that we can then move forward. Um, we anticipate that will be resolved quickly and that we'll be moving forward with site plan review committee um, and then calling the actual meeting. Um, and then we'll, we'll move from there forward into, you know, obviously the public hearing at that time. So um, with, uh, with the interest in this project, um, and then the 25 person cap um, that Mark just, um, I would be hesitant to call this an in person meeting. Um, I think that it would still uh, be a meeting that we'd have to hold over Zoom um, with that cap on there. So I, I anticipate us reaching that 25 person cap very quickly. Okay. Um, have have uh, they been getting uh, copies of some of the letters so they kind of understand how to prepare for the public? Or are they allowed to get copies of the letters? We could send them to them. Um, I think with the, the other entities that are facilitating as well as uh, the comments in the paper, they're well aware of some of the comments that are that have been out there, but we can send them the letters if that's what the, the, um, the commission wishes. Well, I, I was just curious whether or not that was something that was normally done just so that they don't get blindsided. And perhaps, uh, again, you know, I know that they have a little bit of leeway as far as design, you know, as far as color and, and some decor changes to kind of um, blend in as much as possible on the structure as far as with the, you know, the Victorian or the beach kind of aspect. And, and I've seen some of the Hampton Inns down in Florida would certainly look more beachy than the ones that you would see off of the side of the highway that people refer to for the Hamptons. Yeah. It's probably not a bad idea to send letters, send the letters of, of support and denial i guess yep. to them so they have everything it's a good idea is that is that uh the count uh, the commission's wish bob we, what do you think good i think it's a good idea i think they need good. to know where they stand with the community yeah roger yes okay yeah okay, we'll be more sure that they have them yeah okay marlene 
Uh, do they have they purchased the property or is this still speculation? Because I know in the past for us to go through all the review and everything for someone who doesn't even own the property is a lot of time and effort. Um, so the is last that change with the planning commission or do we are we just still we, going to take a look at everything even though they don't own the property? The last, time, the last time I checked on it, it's still pending. It is not closed, but it, it's it's been a little while. Yeah, we want to bring forward a uh, a request like this without some kind of control over the property, um, whether that's a pending agreement to purchase with whatever. But um, I'm hesitant to to speak on the property because what I've said before is we don't have an application that's met the criteria, it's subject to change. Um, so, and, and in fact, it's, it's gone out for corrections again. So, um, I, I mean, it could come back completely different. So, so anything that we even discuss is, is just not, um, not something that we should move forward with. So, um, until that meeting is called, I, I am not comfortable with, uh, getting into this too too deeply but but it's not unusual for somebody to have a a contract that basically says they'll purchase once uh the um agreement has been reached with the city to be able to build that is not uncommon you are correct yeah yeah i know that yeah okay uh pam you have anything yeah, I want to know why the city council is so anti-sign ordinance. Who do we need to talk to? Who's who's anti-sign, Mick? You know, because I, I, we've got all this stuff coming in, and no way of of. I mean, I mean, Ken Armour, he he wants his own sign down toward the Peninsula District. Everybody's going to be wanting their own sign, and I, I don't understand why you guys don't want it. <laughs> you know, and and I don't either. I honestly, I I, I thought that the decision was that we did want but you know I, I can't speak for the whole council um but i i don't know why anyone would object you know other than the fact that it is it is a monumental task i mean it is not easy uh and and my suggestion i think that i made before is that we we maybe tackle it by sections or streets or areas and try yeah. to, instead of trying to eat the whole elephant in one bite. At, at least hit the 31 corridor at, at the very least. Yep. Well, and I think, and I think it's important too, if we do 31, I think uh, it should be easy to do uh, River Street. And yeah. then I think at the same time, since we know this is, you know, all the, all that's going on down at the beach, uh, address the beachfront property as well. So again, I would hope that, you know, uh, a monument sign will be part of the proposal instead of having some big neon thing that obviously will cause consternation. Uh, yeah. right. I, so I will comment on, on that district. Um, outside of certain criteria within that district, signs are not allowed. Okay. Um, as a PUD coming in, um, or they're very limited. So those are like home-based business signs as well as, so uh, PUDs allow for flexibility, as you guys know. Um, so that's how you're seeing a sign, but that has to be approved with total control by you guys. So if you don't like it, just don't approve it. So, so, monument, so say, oh, our, monument, our monument sign you know, I don't mind if they have, you know, something on the side of the building, but, uh, you know, again, uh, I agree that, you know, we don't want it to look like the Las Vegas Strip either, so. Oh. You don't want any waterfalls or? Like <laughs> well, the waterfall would be fine, just not the neon, so. <laughs> <laughs> so is the thing be the sign ordinance being held up, is it by the city manager that he doesn't want to tackle this or? No. I, I just think the, I don't think, and I, and I take complete fault for this. I think when I, I brought it forward to them looking for direction, um, they, they misunderstood or misinterpreted what I was saying or didn't feel that I was expressing 
a big enough concern on it. So um, what I what I what I might recommend is uh, a suggestion from council on you know if they would like us to develop it a certain area they would like us to concentrate on, and then we can move from there. Um, so if it's River Street, it's River Street. If it's US 31 corridor, it's US 31 corridor. But direction in that aspect, and that way it, it minimizes any tasks that we, um, you know, that we undertake. We're not undertaking it all at once. We can put purpose into those areas. Um, we can, you know, go out and move over, you know, the next couple months and, and look over those areas and say, you know, what do we feel is appropriate here? What are our recommendations? Bring them before you guys, as opposed to trying to do either in a one size fits all sign ordinance, which is it's not gonna work. And, yeah. um, but direction is something that's needed because um, while we got questioned about it, last time we brought it forward for direction, uh, they, they didn't feel that, um, or they're they kind of back and forth on it. Um, and, they didn't give us that direction. So um, I don't wanna bring something forward like we have with other things in the past. And then when they go to get approved, they're denied or they don't feel that it, it is an issue. So um, I do take responsibility for that. And, and maybe I wasn't expressing that enough. Uh, really what we are looking for is, yes, you want us to develop this and choose an area that you want us to concentrate on. So you got to admit you had a win during the last uh, city council meeting. I, every ordinance you suggested got approved. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was worried a little. Not bit. yet. We still have another reading. We got one more reading. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And we did, uh, we did um, send out a memo, and I hope city council got that, um, explaining that a little bit more because there was questions. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I. I just want to make sure it goes smoothly and everybody wants us when we put the time in that we we're we're investing in on something yep. that we want as opposed to us wasting time that we could invest in something else. Okay. She's okay. Is that, is that it, Pam? That's it, yep. Okay. I just think it's better to be a little proactive now than trying to get rid of something ugly later on. Right. Because yep. we got enough ugly. Excellent point. We do, yes. <laughs> Marlene, you finish off tonight? I'm happy with everything. Thanks. All right. And uh, a question for Mike. Mike, are we, are you getting any blight reports? I, I know. No, uh, I do not receive blight reports. I don't, and Zach doesn't either. Um, as far as any motion or movement on those. Um, the uh, city police department handles that for the most part, but we are not um, privy to those reports. Okay. Do you want to be? If you guys want to be, because basically what we can do is if there's a desire on the commission to have those, we usually forward them out from you. But if they're, if they are being sent out and including the city PC's email on that, that would be, if that's what they would like, would be awesome. Would, would everybody like to see that? I, I'd like to see them, yeah. Okay. Well, Mick yeah. gets it. Bob? Yep. Okay. Marlene? Yes, I'd like to see that also. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, talk, to, I'll talk to Thad about... Um, because I, you know, again, I know that they have been doing some updates on the blight. Um, it'll be interesting once uh, once your new ordinance comes through, um, because there are a number of those questionable structures out and about. There are. Roger, so very close to the planning commission. You you could throw a rock at one of those structures from your office. <laughs> Well, if they're existing, remember their grandfather to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it's a blight ordinance, though, um, that that's enforceable usually through the building uh, inspector in the in the police department. Um, we don't typically enforce on those guys, so I just want to let you know that. So if there's no confusion on that, um, we do zoning and um, received some questions today. 
uh, about um, storage of trailers in people's front yards. Uh, and there is a time limit on how long they can be in your driveway and they are required to be stored in your side or rear yard. So um, just letting you know. And, and they can't block the sidewalk. That's correct. Well, that's city property, so yes. Right, well, the sidewalk is actually the, the state, the right of way, that's a state law. Not in the city, only along the major state highways, not in the city streets. City streets is local municipal. Well, I thought there was a state a state ordinance about uh, blocking sidewalks. No, nope, those are all local ordinances. Uh, some other cities they allow you to park on the sidewalks, okay. especially in the winter time because they don't have off street parking. Right. Ludington. Yep. Okay. Um, that's all I have. So, um, with that, I I just want to thank everybody for tonight. Mike, Zach, Nancy, Planning Commissioners, and everybody that attended. So with that, I would take a motion to, to adjourn. We got two more hours to go. I don't think so. I'll make a motion. It's not 10 o'clock. My motion is out of cigarettes, so. <laughs> yeah. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion. Okay. I'll second. All right, have a good night. And good we'll night. see you soon. Good night, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks.